Resolve Dialog Mixing, Part 1. Setup, EQ, Dynamics. If you've been following along so far in this DaVinci Resolve dialog editing series, uh, the next step is really fun. We're actually going to mix the dialog. So it's important if you haven't done a proper dialog edit, please go back to, to square one, start with the, the intro to dialog editing of this series and just go through the whole process. Because if you skip to mixing without a proper dialog edit, you are going to have a terrible time and it's not going to sound very good. Um, don't skip these very important steps of prepare, organize, edit, and clean up. So if you, you know, want to have the best sounding dialogue, you can't really shortchange any of these steps. You need to go through the process. If you're just looking to slam stuff out the door, then this is not the series for you. Go watch a different tutorial. So dialogue mixing basics. This, it doesn't really matter what program you use. This is a specific uh, resolve class, but the, the whole point of mixing and the kind of mantra and philosophy of it, I guess, is the same, really. It's it's very important to ensure the clarity of every word that's meant to be heard by the audience. Sometimes you want to uh, mask the dialogue, like if it's behind a door or it's not really meant to be heard, then it's fine to go pretty far, you know, with like EQ and processing to make it less clear. But people are going to watch this project one time. So you want them to get every word on the first watch through. So that's important. Uh, the next thing, we really want to preserve the good characteristics of the sound and reduce the bad. That can mean broadband noise, that can mean sibilance, it could be a, an EQ, like a frequency that's sticking out, um, or maybe a, a frequency that's missing that needs to be boosted. Um, the other super important thing, you'll find this in every video I make, I talk about supporting the story. Really, all of our jobs, from script writing to final delivery, it's about supporting and telling a story. So just that kind of goes with the last one, which is always consider why you're doing something. I see a lot of beginners, they have these noise reduction tools, they have compressors, they have EQ, and they just go ham on it and they, they use way too much processing. Don't do that. Just do what's needed to, to tell the story and make it seamless, basically. Uh, you do have to meet some technical requirements with Mixing, if you're just doing YouTube or um, streaming, you know, like TikTok or whatever, you don't have to worry too much about that because it'll be, it's going to be normalized uh, if it's too loud. But like there's basic technical requirements uh, for loudness and things like that. So that's part of mixing. Blending mics and angles to create a cohesive narrative, that kind of goes back to supporting the story. You know, if mics sound drastically different or you have just a boom and then you go to just a lab, that can be a little tricky. And always with all these things, even back to the dialogue edit, consider why you're doing it. So let's go to resolve. And I've got a pretty good dialogue edit here. I would say it's not perfect, but it's it's good. And if you want to see how I got there, just go back through the dialogue editing series. We're really considering the fact that you have a good dialogue edit as a starting point for this video. So if you have just a bunch of clips butted up against each other, you, you need to go back and actually edit it. So uh, I've got fade ins, fade outs, I've got mics muted that don't need to be there. And I'll just show you kind of the layout that I have. So I have boom, two labs. So this is my A checkerboard. Here's my B checkerboard in lime. And then in regular green, I've got my C checkerboard. So each of these groups of tracks has a boom and two labs. And that's nice because if I just want to process the boom a certain way, I can do that. Same with the labs. You could even label these labs by character. Like in this short, we have Josh and we have Kyle. So I could easily do that. But for now, it's just boom and two labs. Now, if you want a shortcut and you just want to start with a session that's already set up for dialogue, I will post a link to this template. You can get it on my website. It'll be super cheap. It'll just be some basic things to get you started. So if you get lost and you're like, dude, just give me a shortcut. You can go ahead and check that out and that should help you out. Just to show you kind of what I have on the tracks and why, we'll talk about a little bit why, like order of processing. Let's uh, start with just going from the top down. So I do have the tracks labeled, that's important. Um, you can label them DX1 or Dialog1 all the way to whatever. I've got production effects tracks and I've got a, a temp VO track down here too, but the production tracks, you want to change the order of processing here this is in Fairlight. So all once you switch to audio, just go to the Fairlight tab. Like don't do any of this in the cut or edit tabs. Um, each of these tracks, 
has this order of processing, which is EQ first, then dynamics, then effects. The reason EQ should be first is because if we're like, for example, cutting a lot of sub bass, then the compressor doesn't have to compress sub bass. So it just cleans the signal as it goes through the chain. And then any effects we have are going to be seeing a, an EQ'd signal that's a little compressed maybe, so they're gonna have to work less hard. So this order, it's a second from the bottom, is pretty important. Um, and you wanna do that for all your tracks. The next thing, uh, if you double click the dynamics, it's this little green diagonal line. The, com the dialogue compression preset in Fairlight is pretty good. Um, the ratio is pretty low. Like all these are good starting points. You can always adjust the threshold if you want. The other trick is just to increase the mix to like 50%. That's called parallel compression. But I'd say just if you're just starting out, just use a dial compression preset on the tracks. The next thing is the EQ. And the starting point for this Go ahead and click the dialog clean at a high end and then just bring down the high shelf bring down the um band at four and then go ahead and bring band six down to about 14k the reason i like to do this is because if there's any weird super high frequency uh wireless interference or emi it's going to filter that out and some hollywood mixers actually low pass that's what this is called their dialogue all the way down to eight kilohertz so I don't suggest doing that to me like 14, 13 is, is perfect because it cleans up the stuff that you can't really hear too well. And especially if people are watching on the web, you know, it's not really going to matter. Um, but it's, it doesn't cut so much that it sounds really muffled like an 80s action movie. So those are the basic settings for all the dialogue tracks. And then what you'll want to do as you go through is actually turn on automation that enables the automation for you to actually mix. And then if you click this automation controls, that is how you see what automation mode, if you're in right or trim, uh, touch, do, go ahead and do latch. Um, you could do snap latch as well. I like to do latch. That way, if you bring up a track while you're mixing, it will just keep it at that level until you stop. On stop, set that to return. And then just enable the fader. I mean, you can enable all these if you want. Uh, EQ and compressor. Um, let's talk also about routing. I know this is a lot of talking, but it's it's a lot to cover. So when you start a project in Premiere, it's going to route these tracks to bus one. That's kind of the starting point. So all these audio tracks feed into bus one. And you can see I have a little bit of compression uh, and a little bit, the VO is not compressed at all. It's flat. But the dialogue tracks have EQ and compression. And then the bus also has a little bit of compression. Uh, and it has a limiter to keep it from peaking over minus six. I think I have mine set too. Yeah. So this, the reason I like to do both bus and track compression, you'll find 10 different mixers mixed 10 different ways. If you just do processing on the tracks, that's totally fine. You might have no EQ and no compression on the tracks and have it all on your bus. That's also fine. There's not like a correct way to do this. But the reason I like to do a little bit on the tracks and a little bit on the bus is because if I need to globally adjust the compression for all the dialogue or the EQ, for example, like it's just too boomy when I play it back on something, I can just adjust one compressor or I can just adjust one EQ and the whole dialogue stem has the adjustment. If I need to adjust an individual line, for example, one line is too boomy or it's too low, or I need to do a little more um, you know, compression or EQ on it, I can do that on the track level. So it really gives you the flexibility of both doing track and bus. So the tracks feed into the bus. It's kind of like it's kind of like creeks flowing into a river. So the creeks are the, the tracks and the river is the bus. You can also set up buses for other stems like dialogue and music, and we will definitely get into that. For now, I'm gonna name this bus Dialogue Bus. So I know that's that. And then I also have a VCA, which I've labeled Dialogue VCA. A VCA is kind of like a boss fader that controls the level of all these tracks before they go through the bus. 
and and why that's important any processing i have on this bus that is based on a threshold compression or noise reduction which i have here if you increase the level of the audio going into the bus it's going to affect the threshold so sometimes that's good sometimes that's bad with the vca i can with one fader control the level of all the tracks going into the bus another nice thing about that if, for example, I just automated the level on this bus, let's say I turn this bus up plus six or plus 10, the, the limiter that's on here is not gonna keep it from going over. The limiter is only set to minus six. So if I go plus 10, it's gonna clip. So the bus I use for fine adjustments, you know, like two or three dB, um, but you can also use the VCA for that. So it's set up just to be super flexible and it doesn't, tie your hands on how you mix so let's actually start mixing with all that all that lip flap um it's just kind of to explain the, the thought process behind it so we're actually going to mix now and the first thing you know we want to keep an eye on our levels our peak and our especially the short term and the integrated try to keep the integrated around minus 24 if you can uh, you can go a little louder for yelling or if it's just for youtube you can always you know increase that but what i'm listening for here is the stuff we talked about here clarity of the words the good characteristics we want to preserve we want to reduce the bad technical requirements blending and we always want to ask why so let's just listen with no automation this is just basic settings we're going to listen to this hey man you have it yeah Look, if you don't want to sell, I get it. The boss just said you needed the money. Protect this. Keep it safe. Someday, you might need it. Wait. Here. Five hundred's a deal. And that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart. He knows how hard things have been since he left the business. Well? PayPal, okay. You know, friends and family, no fees. Whatever. It's Rainbow 69, 420. Good deal. You be sure to tell Sarah hi for us, all right? Protect this. So it's pretty good. You know, I didn't hear anything that was like, ooh, that's really terrible. There was a little bit of... Um, noise on i think it was this shot towards the end you can hear there's a high frequency uh it's an interference sign it's analog interference so let's just start with troubleshooting that that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart he knows okay you hear that sound come in of your old employer's heart so that is like a sennheiser and other analog uh even some of the electros will do that so we can edit that out in dialogue editing but the dialogue editor has has left that in so we're going to see if we can get that out with mixing so we've got our eq enabled we'll go to lav 6 on our eq here and let's see if we can just automate this and that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart let's see if the automation took and that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart. So you can see I did, I just took the high shelf and I brought it down with automation while he was uh, saying his last part of his line. And yeah, we do lose some of the clarity, but we don't have that shh sound. So if we mix everything with the boom and the incoming tracks, let's see if that's enough. Uh, oftentimes with mixing, you don't have to take things all the way out. You just need to improve them enough to uh you know hide it basically so that's another mistake i see people make is they think well i've got all these noise reduction tools let me just take all the noise out and you really don't want to do that um but let's see if i got this 500 is a deal and that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart he knows how hard things have been since he left the business so it's still there a tiny tiny bit uh, maybe i will just use the low pass filter as well. 500 is a deal. 
And that's only because that's out of the goodness of your old employer's heart. He knows how hard things have been since he left. The so I would say that's good enough. We like we lose a little bit of the, the clarity, but you don't hear the uh, interference as much. So I'm good on that. And then the other thing we can do, everything is pretty even. Really like using the the stacked compressors helps even things out so much. And this might be a little too much compression for like a feature film. If you're doing a feature film though, you're probably hiring somebody to actually mix. So um, for like web content, it's really smart to use a little more compression because you know people are watching on phones and iPads. So you want to make sure every word is heard. I'm sitting here editing this video and looking at my timeline and it's gonna be like 35 minutes long. I'm actually going to break this into chunks. We'll keep this first, you know, 15, 16 minutes about project setup, EQ, dynamics, that kind of thing. And then the next video is going to be about noise reduction, which is going to be, I think, really popular. So thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, hopefully this video has helped you, you know, kind of get an intro to dialogue editing in DaVinci Resolve and Fairlight. And make sure you check out the next video where we dive into noise reduction and, um, different kinds of automation tricks and stuff like that while you're mixing your film in DaVinci Resolve. I'll see you then.